All right, here we go. 2.6 combinations of transformations. So example one, you're asked to describe in appropriate order the transformations that must be applied to the base function y f at x to obtain the transform function. Then write the corresponding equation and determine the transformation table. So f at x equals the absolute of x, and g of x equals negative 3 times f at 2x minus 6 minus 1. What does this have to do with this? Well, all this is saying is we have to apply this transformation. To be able to do that, we have to make sure that x has a coefficient of 1. So, for the next part, we have is the function as such, and we have to make x have a coefficient of 1. That means that g of x will equal negative 3 f at 2 times x minus 3, close bracket, minus 1. What that means, now let's look here very carefully, is that what happens here? Well, this means there's a vertical reflection a vertical stretch, a horizontal compression, a horizontal translation to the right 3, and a vertical translation of down 1 from the absolute function. So we will apply this whole transformation to this absolute function. So to describe, we have done in the past by using our transformation table. This is a table to describe the transformation. So it's our description table. We have horizontal and vertical, and we definitely have all of the other possibilities. Basic, reflection, stretch and compress, translation, asymptote, and domain and range going down, and this is going across. This is our description table. Our basic we're going to use today is the absolute function y equals absolute of x. So it's the absolute function. The absolute, remember, looks like a V. Now, does this transformation have any reflections? Well, yes, there is a vertical reflection, but no horizontal reflection. Horizontal means there'd be a negative here. There is a negative here. So that's a vertical reflection. Next, do we have a stretch or compress? Well, we have a vertical stretch and a horizontal compression. So a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 and a horizontal stretch, uh, compression by a factor of 1 half. Next, you're asked about translations. Well, you have a translation to the right 3 and a translation down 1. There is no asymptote, either 1, but you definitely have a domain. The domain of any V, whether it's up, face, uh, opening up or down, means the domain will be x belongs to real. But in this case, normally it'd be at 0, our graph moved down 1 for the range. So because it moved down 1 and it had a reflection, means that it will be opening an upside down V, so it, our range will be y belongs to real such that y is less than or equal to negative 1. And that will be the entire description table for this absolute function that's transformed. How would this table change, let's say, if I decided to make this absolute a, oh, let's see, a root function? What would happen now? Well, what would happen is no longer will we have obviously an absolute, we would now have a root function. So it changed to a root. If we have a root function, means that our basic table will have a root x as our starting part. And a root function looks like the following. It doesn't have a v, for example. It will have a hard start and it would start off looking like this. How does, how does the actual table itself change? 
Well, the only part that changes for us folks is down in the, in the domain and range. Obviously, our domain would change so that we have the following. Instead of x belongs to real stop, we'll have x belongs to real such that x, in this case, is because it moved right 3, x will be greater than or equal to 3. Now, for the range, it moved down 1 and it had a reflection. So what that means is now our range will be y is less than or equal to negative 1. No, not that, sorry, not less than, but it'll still, yeah, it'll be less than or equal, it will be less than or equal to negative 1 because our graph will have had a vertical reflection, so it looks like this, and then it moves up, sorry, right 1 and down 1, so that hard start will be at 3, negative 1 to be able to get that value. All right, and the same can be said that if it was a root, it could change into an absolute, it could change to a reciprocal, it can change to a cubic. It doesn't matter what this value is here. Notice that the description really doesn't change much with the exception of what goes inside the basic part of the table and the domain and range. All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at another example. So here we go. All right, here it is, the same equation, that absolute that we originally worked with. And this time what we're looking at is how do we write the equation. Write the equation by replacing f with the absolute sign. And once we do that, we can actually do our table of values as well. What will our table of values be? Well, whatever basic it is that fills in this spot. That'll be worth one mark. One mark will be to get this part right, the x's, which will be one half x plus three. And remember that we had to pull out the two to get x minus three in brackets. And that's what we end up with here, as well as negative three y minus one. That will be this side. So we have our coordinates. We'll have our x worth one mark y with one mark, and fill in finding the correct values for the x and y. So for a total of five marks. All right, now remember that x must always have a coefficient of one. Very, very important that you have x have a coefficient of one. Next, connect and apply. Given the graph of the function f at x, sketch each graph of g of x. Now here's an example of where I actually just give you a graph and I ask you to transform it. We're going to ignore A, B, and C, so we're just going to ignore those three, and we're going to go straight to D. The reason I want to be able to do that is if we, look in, if we look at D, we should be able to apply all of these transformations. Ready? Here we go. X and Y. And what coordinate, what transformations are we going to have? Well, we need to make sure x has a coefficient of 1 first. So, take the original basic coordinates that are these coordinates, negative 6, negative 2, negative 2, negative 4, 2, negative 4, 4, 6, 8, 2, and 10, 2. All of these coordinates, we're now going to transform. How are we going to transform them? We'll make x have a coefficient of 1. g of x equals 3 times f at negative 0 0.5 times x minus 2. Don't forget, we're dividing this by negative 0 0.5, and then outside will be negative 3. So up here on the table, we will have 3 sorry, negative 2, so we have to do negative 2, x plus 2, so negative, reflect horizontally, stretch horizontally, write 2. And then the y will be 3y 
minus 3, so again, vertically stretch by a factor of 3, and down 3. Now, we take all these x-coordinates, folks, plug it in, and find the new x-coordinates, and here they are. And the same for the y values, you plug in these y values into the table to get the new y values. Once we do that, you may be asked to graph this, for example. So you could graph 14, negative 9, 6, negative 15, and so on, all the way through on the graph that you have or you'll be given. All right, folks, that's the end of this video, just talking about transformations of all the different possibilities. Hope this helps. Have a numerical day. Take care.